Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to look at a quick example of con actually constructing a confidence interval here for P. So let's read this example here. And a lot has been made out of this, this study, uh, but it found that a very high proportion of NFL players who had their, their brains looked at after they died right, found signs of, of CTE. All right, so we want to make a 92% confidence interval here, and we want to think about the interpretation for P. All right, so first step is we want to think about, okay, is our, is our sample size big enough? Do we meet the criteria? All that kind of thing. Okay, so N is 91. 91 times 0.956 is a very high P hat, I think that's going to reach our, meet our criteria there. Okay. So, let's look at using all of this information and plugging in to our formula. So our formula looks like this. Alright, so using all this information, simply plugging in. Alright, I have P hat. The only hard part, we got P hat, we got N, got all this stuff given to us in the problem. The only hard part is finding our critical value. All right, now for 90, 95, 99, those are commonly used ones. Maybe at this point you're you're getting a pretty good memory of what those exact critical values are, right? 95 is 1.96, 99, 2.575. Okay, but most of us probably haven't memorized well it's 92%. Okay, so let's think about that and let's actually try to find this, this critical value associated with 92%. Okay, so for 92%, right, I'm going to think, okay, so for 92%, remember I'm going to think, okay, 1 minus 0.92, that leaves me with 0.08. Then there's two sides to a confidence interval, so that leaves me with 0.04. So 0.04 is what I would look up in my table. All right, so I'm going to try to find the closest value that I have to 0.04 here. So I'm not. Whenever I'm doing this, I don't always have the perfect value, but here 0.0401. That's that's really close to what we're looking for. All right, so that would be 1.75. So the critical value that I would want to use here would be 1.75. Otherwise, plug this guy in, plug N in, and we're good to go. So how do we interpret this interval? Well, we interpret it just like an interval that we've seen before, right? The objective of this interval has, hasn't changed. We're still using a statistic to estimate a parameter and supplementing that, that, that point estimate with the variability of what we know about the statistic sampling distribution, right? Same idea of a confidence interval, same objective, right? It's just a different parameter of interest, right? So here we could say something like we're 92% confident this interval we created captures the true proportion of people who uh, who get CTE. And this was an interesting, kind of an interesting sample, um, an interesting study, because they, you know, were looking at people's brains after the fact and a lot of these players thought they already had CTE so they you know they said donate my donate my remains to science and let them look so th this was kind of a controversial study but but anyways here's here's the numbers all right so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time